Psy-Terror. So in this thread, I will share my story. During my year of being under terror, I identified some features and specifics of the operation of the PSYOP system. I understand perfectly well that there are a lot of trolls and other interesting personalities here, but oh well, the so-called PSYOPs love humor. They have specific jokes, but maybe my story will help someone or someone will be interested. Maybe I will get some useful information, but mainly, I will try to dispel all sorts of misconceptions like the fact that the Lord God, reptilians, sectarians, some advanced cyber criminal hackers, the Zero Cytronic Mafia, and similar nonsense are not doing this. Believe me, everything is much simpler. So who really does this? The Federal Pain Service is doing this, together with special police departments. To support my opinion, I'll tell you that the attack was associated with the establishment of a fake criminal case. In particular, it happened when I was under house arrest. Thus, they brought me into the open phase, so to speak. They knocked on the door. Good evening, we would like to work with you a little, so to speak. Plus, at the investigation stage, they tried very hard not to expose themselves. There was a certain FSB investigator who, in a private conversation, told me in plain text that we know everything about you. Then you will understand why he said that. Also, immediately anticipating accusations of madness, I will say that as part of the case, I underwent as many as two forensic psychiatric examinations. There will be no proof of my claims in order to preserve confidential information, but believe me, I am not crazy. Having recovered a little, I don't know whether they removed the effect on the brain or whether it was my fault, it's still not clear. I began to analyze and study this phenomenon, and I came to the conclusion that, apparently, I was in the latent phase for a very, very long time, more than 10 years. Let me just say that I could not even read two lines from the book, couldn't really talk, could not stand on my feet for even five minutes. Mostly, I lay in bed and just slept, but sleep is a separate issue. Do you feel a motivated fatigue, depression, mood swings, pain in different parts of the body? that was previously not typical for you. Oh yes, that's it. I won't call it a psychotronic generator, but I prefer the term radio frequency weapon. How they detect you, specifically, is not clear. Someone says that they measure the frequency of the brain, which is individual for everyone, and then supposedly you can receive information directly from the brain, and not only receive, but in my memory, I don't remember anyone at all. I was once able to capture this frequency, According to the stories of other people, they usually remember this moment, but I did not have anything like that. The question remains open and is being discussed. If I am right about the fact that I have been under covert surveillance since birth, then it is necessary to find out what kind of mechanism this is. I have an assumption that they detect the right person based on his injuries, scars, chronic diseases, because, for example, I had a bad heart since birth. How this is done is still unclear but it's definitely not for chipping. Opening up my old wounds was worth it, because in the process of observation, I discovered the following. They can have an effect on your injuries. In particular, slow down healing or reopen the pain when they need to suppress you a little. So if you get hit by a roller, then say a tooth is not filled, the pain from that can become a huge problem for you. Take note and do not repeat mistakes, as they have the ability to also affect the stomach. So if you take a painkiller, it will not help you at all. Also, if there are suspicions of a latent phase, below I will try to give signs from my bell tower. Take care of yourself, your stomach, any minor fractures, stress emotions. If you play sports, avoid traumatic exercises. So let's move on. I'll say right away that I'm not a techie. I'm not really a fan of exact sciences, so do not judge me harshly. If I'm wrong somewhere, please correct me. Type of radiation. I know for sure that this is electromagnetic radiation. Most likely, some kind of mark is placed on a person's limbs. Something like an RFID tag, but on a person. I will describe what I felt when they supposedly put marks on me. There was a feeling of heating of different parts of the body, limbs, as well as a metallic smell and taste, like you would have when working with an angle grinder. I do not exclude the possibility that there are no marks at all and this is how they simply showed themselves. It also has something to do with the wiring in the house, because in your body, 
you feel something like the flow of low power currents. And also, some of the effects that you experience in the body can be suddenly turned off, and you will notice a voltage surge. For example, the lighting will flicker. I'll say right away that I'm a layman when it comes to material. Assumption. Somehow, something like your 3D model is drawn. Biometrics, possibly. Marks are placed on the limbs. Then a pulse of electromagnetic radiation is sent to your marks, which creates a magnetic field. And already, in the created magnetic field, they can, as it were, click over you, over your limbs, etc., with the same impulses. There is proof. They don't need to install cameras. They just see you on the monitor screen as a 3D model. That's kind of how I see it. Note. You often feel magnetization of the hairy part of your legs and arms. An ordinary food bag sticks to you very strongly, as well as electric shocks when you touch iron. Of course, it's synthetic, but even when you have good clothes, the effect persists. We have been observing this effect for a very long time, comparable to the estimated time of putting into development 10 years or more. Assumption. They are irradiated with something that seems to introduce metal into the body. In the future, this becomes a kind of magnet for impulses sent into you. That is, it creates the magnetic field around the irradiation points. My guess is, different types of radiation are used, including acoustic. That is, everything is collected in one place, as pricks in the heart are often felt, which is possible when using infrasound. The device they use is large and cumbersome. Just because it's definitely not criminals who are doing this, or Vastian, who assembled a sect and a psychotronic generator at home, too many resources are needed for all this. Who can attack you for years? Years. And who has unlimited resources for your money? The answer is obvious. What they can do to you. They can open your memory like a tin can. They know everything about you. They can read and transmit thoughts, work with the subconscious, so you won't even understand whether they are your thoughts. It is tested by the so-called internal dialogue. When you determine exactly where your thoughts are, by thinking about something neutral, you will feel the duality of thoughts and can understand where your thoughts are. The well-known auditory hallucinations. They can transmit voices to the brain. Fake any voices, because somehow they are extracted from your memory. They can put your own voice into your head, so you will talk to yourself. Funny, by the way, but these are their jokes. They can cause burning sensations and various pain sensations in different parts of the body and internal organs, raise the temperature, and cause burning and squeezing in the chest. They can control your mood, in particular, put you into depression, then turn off the depression mode and you feel normal again. They can cause anger, fear, and anxiety. About gang stalking, there is no persecution, Everything is in your head. That's absolutely true. Nobody is watching you. Neighbors and ordinary people have nothing to do with it. It works as follows. Since the radiation is directed at you, then by reading your thoughts and working with fears and inhibitions, they can transmit them to the people around you, but not in direct form, of course. For example, you are thinking about something and talking to a person. Suddenly, he may just say something, but it seems to you that he means what you were thinking about at that moment. This simulates the effect of mind reading and stalking. Or you suspect someone of something. The thoughts will be read, processed, and transferred to another person, and he will tell you something that will make you think that your suspicions are justified. But in 100% of what happened to me, I was wrong. They can slow down the healing of injuries. For example, you have a fracture. It takes an incredibly long time to heal, but it has healed. I could not determine whether they simply removed their effect on the injury or whether the body was able to heal it eventually. They can cause diarrhea, as well as imitate poisoning. They can cause excitement, either by using external influence or by using mental images, as if showing pictures in your head. They can come up with their own, or they can take it straight from your memory. Having understood this, you can successfully cut them out. They can cause headaches, drowsiness, fatigue. Also, when the head is irradiated, a specific dullness can be achieved. The head becomes wobbly. Memory and thinking work poorly. There is information that they can see by using your eyes and listening with your ears. I can't say anything about this, but while under this terror, sometimes you can hear real knocks and clicks. They are not in your head, because they have been checked and recorded, indicating something, for example, a kettle or something else, as if prompting action. 
Either they identify all the objects around, or they use your own eyes to select the desired object or thing. All victims have suspicions about their neighbors. They say they are following them, making noise, etc. It's a slippery slope. I still don't understand how it works, but in short, once you think about what the FSP operative does not like, then if you live in an apartment building, suddenly your neighbor will start knocking or drilling or screaming. In general, it's not entirely clear how such rapid thought processing and reaction occurs. You get the feeling that the person is directly connected to you, but the computer is absolutely used. I can absolutely say that the environment has nothing to do with it. They can convey sensations to you that cannot exist in reality. For example, I had this when I was just eating. There was a feeling that I was eating stones and that my teeth were breaking, which could not happen in reality. They can also blast the sound of their own heart into your eardrum for effect, which gives the impression that your blood pressure has risen critically and that your heart will jump out of your chest. I exposed it by putting my hand to my ear, completely by accident. The sound of my heartbeat suddenly disappeared. Subsequently, there was wild hysteria and attempts to convince me of the reality of the work of my heart. They use this very often. They can influence your surroundings. Attempts to convince someone may well end in failure because they will tell you that it's just stress, a nervous tick, or that you just have not gone outside for a long enough time and have not had enough fresh air, or they will even call you crazy, very comfortably. They can also transmit unreal sounds, such as the noise of some kind of rotating mechanism. Again, the fray effect, apparently. In this way, they try to put you on the wrong trail. The influence on the environment can be manifested in the following way. Two people who do not communicate with each other, but are your acquaintances, can speak the same phrases. Again, psychological pressure, as there is a feeling of conspiracy in hiding any information from you. They can make fun of you through audio and try to humiliate you or also try and give you commands, hidden control. Subsequently, they can remove obvious voices and work with the subconscious. They push you into rash actions. Do not give in under any circumstances. Their impact on electronics. The refrigerator thermostat may click. They can damage an old laptop. I don't understand whether it was a system or hardware error, but when I reinstalled Windows, the laptop's operation improved. Therefore, the error was systemic, but it may or may not have been their action since it had been asking for a reinstallation for a long time. In general, the strategy that they use is to isolate you, discredit you in the eyes of the public and loved ones, and, if possible, make you look like a crazy person. It's not clear whether the executioners in white coats are aware of the world of psychiatry. The question is still open, and in general, it's not clear how to determine the real disease from this thing. A common disease is fine, but a crazy disease? Everything is quite complicated here. They can connect to the interlocutor and give him a philosophical thought, which he will convey to you. You will understand if you know a person very well. His manners, speech, and thinking will give themselves away by the fact that the person will say something unusual for him or her. And the most subtle thing, dreams. As you already understand, at the beginning of the open phase, you will not be allowed to sleep, and some time will pass before you are able to pass out. This is where the magic begins. These are so-called synthetic dreams. They can use your fears, your dreams, or desires, your experiences, and distort everything to such an extent that when you wake up, you will be scratching your head for a long time, trying to understand whether your brain is leaking and it's time to urgently go to hell, or if it's worth further troubleshooting. You can figure this out only by knowing yourself, and determining whether this kind of dream is typical for you or not, and whether you have even dreamed them before. I was lucky. Before I had dreams, very, very rarely, but then it suddenly exploded. Naturally, it aroused suspicion. Besides, dreams were absolutely not typical for me. If something like this happens, I recommend immediately putting it out of your head without thinking. They can make fun of some stupid thought in your head and project a funny dream, but this is only after you understand that the king is not real dreams, not generated by your mind. Their effect on domestic animals. There is a cat. When you touch her, there is a strange feeling. The same sensations are transmitted to her as to me. 
Also, if you hold it in your arms, they cannot focus on you. They hit the animal, which causes it to itch and generally behave inappropriately. There are suspicions that they can easily gain control over her. Signs of the latent phase. There may be unexplained nausea in the morning, feeling of clicking in the nasopharynx or joints. You will have problems at work and with your team. You seem to be doing everything right, working hard, but you cannot advance anywhere and conflicts are also possible out of the blue with colleagues. The same thing works in the sphere of personal life, the inability to start a family. Strange and curable diseases from childhood, which subsequently disappeared. For example, I had bronchial asthma, but after some age, it no longer manifested itself. Personal opinion. Depression of an unclear nature in a seemingly normal state of affairs. Loss of interest in hobbies. This is also a slippery topic, as there are suspicions that they may instill some interests inherent in the psychopaths themselves. A radical change of interest. You are very tired. After work, you just want to fall asleep, and as a result of a shift in your routine, you are more and more awake at night. He chalked it up to mental fatigue. Memory problems. They are doing something wrong with your brain, which causes partial loss of long-term memory. They can roll it back. I got the impression that they cut out what they do not like in there. A decrease in thinking capabilities is understandable since memory manipulation is carried out. Anger attacks or panic attacks may occur. Sometimes I heard, or rather not only heard, but seemed to catch in my brain a high frequency squeak directed directly at my head. But, they say, many people hear, microwaves are also used. At the very last moment, when you fall asleep, you may feel something like a weak electric shock, which will wake you up abruptly. In the open phase, at the same moment, you can hear snatches of voices and audio. The targets are chosen to be as isolated as possible, not sociable and interesting to them in some way. Probably, famous personalities are simply in a latent phase without suspecting it. It is quite possible that, in principle, everything is already under control. The question of finding a certain person is open. I haven't read much Zen, as you can see. I have my own opinion, and that probably differs from his opinion. In addition, now they will begin to twist their ass in order to discredit everything that I wrote here, in order to confuse everyone. It is possible that the guy creating the threads is an agent. The previous threads are full of trolls and people who like to send people to hell, but some Anon wrote about something called Dune or Waha. By a strange coincidence, somewhere, a day before reading the thread, the PSYOPs broadcast the word Dune to me at the moment when I fell asleep. If anyone knows about these words, Please share the information you have. They can have an impact everywhere. I went quite far from home, climbed into the cellar, and everything was still the same. Similar cases have also been recorded in the USA. In particular, here is an interesting case. Now, just for the sake of nonsense, let's assume that some high profile crimes were caused by these weapons, for example, mass shootings, etc., and it won't be a laughing matter at all. However, these are my suspicions. As usual, you have to prove it. I will also give related concepts and technologies close to what is used. Transcreal magnetic stimulation, neurofeedback, neurointerface. A psi operator, or simply an operator, psyop, screamer, is someone who has the ability to communicate with the victim right in her head. The number of operators who communicate with the victim at the same time can vary from 1 to 10 or more although the most common situation is 4 to 6. When we say simultaneously, we mean alternately during one period, and not literally at the same time, although there is a phase in which such situations occur. Each victim has his own team of psi operators, in which each has constant signs by which they can be distinguished and recognized, even if their appearance is episodic. Gender. Both men and women are found. Age. From small children, starting from 6 to 8 years old, to very old people. Temperament. Both explosive and phlegmatic, often neutral. They react differently to response trolling. Character. Some like to joke, some often sigh. Some, they like to mock. The timbre of the voice is constant. The intonation changes according to the context. The quality of communication is sudden. A sign that causes a clear sensation in the presence of microphones into which operators speak, and the difference in their quality. 
Some people have constant interference, some have white noise, and some have very clear sound. Operators are classified by their role. Operators are those who communicate directly with the victim. Analysts are those who do not communicate, but are sometimes heard discussing the victim in the third person in the background, as if they were in the same room, but away from the microphone. External employees are people who appear in communication only occasionally, but inflict powerful psychological blows. They may be from among the analysts who came up to the microphone, or from another group. Dream constructors are the people responsible for designing the scenes and dream scenarios in which the victim is placed. Believe me, I fully understand how crazy this sounds, and I will definitely describe in detail all the arguments supporting the ability of operators to construct and manipulate dreams, may be from among the victim's operators. Dream actors are operators who perform roles in the victim's dreams, often in greater numbers than that of the regular operators. I have assumptions about the presence of other roles, but their appearance is episodic and cannot yet be classified. The transmission is what people call voices in your head. As we have already established in our initial classification, transmission is a secondary effect of the active phase. That means that it is impossible to escape or close off from it, and only the victim feels it. For the victim, the volume of the transmission can reach such a level that all activities, both productive and recreational, become impossible. Voices completely capture a person's attention, distracting him from any task, disrupting his concentration and train of thought. The impression from the transmission is the same for any victim. I am being watched, and some people are talking about slash with me, even when they behave inappropriately, tease the victim, troll and provoke. This is precisely human behavior of people who want to piss off the victim. They do not resemble robots or aliens in their communication style or voice sounds. The version of the special services in this case seems logical, before normal analysis, because if any of the people are to engage in mass inhumane procedures on people, then who, if not those, are not responsible for anything? The operators, in turn, are happy to maintain this impression in the victim, goading them with phrases like, what are you going to do to us? We were paid well for you. You and I will do whatever we want. It's not up to you. And so on. The picture is being built that some research institute under the auspices of the special services is conducting experimental work to test secret technologies on random people. However, this picture becomes increasingly implausible as soon as we compare even a few cases and begin to see patterns, especially on a global scale. Victims describe the same thing all over the world. We have already described in detail the types of communication in the previous material. In the third person, dialogue between operators about the victim. Direct speech, dialogue, addressing the victim directly. It usually starts with the victim beginning to hear someone discussing all her actions in the third person. This phase occurs only at the very beginning, but for almost everyone, and never repeats, as if it were an overture for subsequent psychoterrorism. The victim gets the impression that someone is watching her through television cameras and making comments at the same time. It is impossible at this stage to understand that the operator's voices are heard inside your head. They are directional and are heard at different volumes depending on where the victim is, giving the full impression that surveillance is being carried out from apartments in the neighborhood. The more the victim tries to understand what is happening, the more severe the blows her psyche takes. Imagine what it would be like for you to realize that you are being monitored and in such a way that it is impossible to hide from it. The victim realizes with horror that closing the windows and curtains does not help, or the really bugs in the apartment when rummaging through ventilation and disassembling electrical appliances does not reveal bugs, it becomes obvious that scanning occurs through walls or with the help of bugs slash chips in the body of the victim itself. The victim constantly comes up with the ideas on how to close themselves off from surveillance, and she enthusiastically tries them, only to realize that it is useless and again fall into despair. At the same time, the operators act out a very typical scene. From their conversations, a picture emerges as if the victim is being monitored for reasons that are taken from the victim's background. If the victim is interested in politics and does not approve of the authorities, then this is an order from the secret police. If not, then it is an experiment or entertainment for the rich, which is less common in these politically obsessed times. The fact that the victim manages to hear voices seems to surprise the operators. They pretend to briefly close the windows or turn off the microphone that someone mistakenly left on. 
a little later, it becomes clear. One of the operators takes pity on the victim and gives tips so that she can escape. If by this moment, the victim already understands that the surveillance is being carried out through her own senses and her thoughts are also being tapped, then an additional charade begins. You framed your only friend among the operators, as if the victim betrayed the one who helped her with her thoughts. Operators can even stage a fight or punishment scene when the one who prompted or helped the victim screams in pain, simultaneously admonishing, don't give up. Of course, in fact, this is a classic good cop, bad cop technique, which also helps to capture the victim's feeling of compassion. Other mini performances are also performed. For example, operators can feign surprise, can he really hear us, and begin to measure the sensitivity of the victim simply by playing with the level of the transmission signal and asking each other, can he hear us now? Yes, he can hear us, creating the impression of some kind of work, scientific team of experimenters. At the end of the experiment, the operators say, well, he's a fool, he should have been silent, we won't leave him alone now, which causes the victim to go into logical hysterics. The realization that the victim is being talked to in their own head and their thoughts are being read is a strong shock and a reason for a visit to a psychiatrist. But by this point, the impression of reality and rationality of the operators is already so strong that most do not take this option seriously. From this moment, direct speech communication begins. From here, we can make an interesting assumption. The entire third person phase is needed to establish rapport between the victim and the operators, anchoring them in reality and teaching them that what is happening to them is real and not a hallucination. This happens through the gradual supply of factors outside of known signs. This is probably done in order to avoid the victim's rapid escape to the psychiatric hospital, which would be inevitable if the voices suddenly appeared in direct form without any kind of lead up. In addition, starting with the neighbor's version and, unnoticed by himself, climbing deeper into the rabbit hole of the operator script, the victim is so irritated and carried away by what is happening that they have neither the time nor the energy for reflection and a sober assessment of what is happening from a logical point of view. Tunnel vision is also helped by the fact that the victim is in a state of deprivation. They can never sleep, nor work, nor be distracted, nor go to the toilet without operator comments, nor even really think. Only a few thoughts will be spinning in their head. Why? Why me? Why are they doing this to me? Even, why are they so incompetent? In the third person phase, when everything that happens is obviously technical in nature, the victim does not have the impression that they are going crazy. Instead, there is an impression that they either want to drive them crazy, which is partly true, or make them look crazy. This is indeed the impression that everyone around the victim gets. Firstly, they do not hear or observe anything that the victim is absolutely sure of, which logically leads them to assume that the victim has a mental disorder. Secondly, the victim's version of what is happening changes almost daily, as the operators skillfully add strokes to the overall picture. The victim gets the impression that they are solving a mystery, but those around them see that every day, a person with voices in their head changes their version of the processes happening to them that no one else sees or hears. Moreover, the victim blames either the neighbors or the security services, stirring up fear in the cohabitants that she is about to attack either the neighbors or themselves. What do Psy operators want? Understanding the goals of what is happening is vitally important for any subject of psychoterrorism. Misunderstanding of goals gives rise to false conclusions, and these, in turn, give rise to erroneous actions. Imagine that your car is making a strange knocking noise, and instead of diagnosing it, you start sprinkling it with holy water in full confidence that there are devils inside of it, because the priest calls your car a demonic cart. It sounds absurd, but this is exactly how most victims behave. In search of a quick answer, they simply accept speculation and panicky speculation from the internet as true, supported by their own negative experience in a state of psychosis that is not conducive to analytics. But if you dig into most of these versions, they do not stand up to criticism. Moreover, they go in the wrong direction, first assigning a culprit, usually the intelligence agencies, and then, more guessing than deducing, establishing the cause. The most popular are destruction, intimidation of the people, and the like, dictated by popular culture and real programs of the Cold War intelligence services, which are often lumped together with psi-terrorism, although they have little in common. If your goal is real understanding, 
and not dragging familiar and banal evil by the ears to an absolutely non-banal problem, then you should start with what we can really establish. Namely, with the goals of what is happening. This may seem strange to you, because how can we set goals if we don't know who it is? However, in reality, it is not much more complicated than understanding that the goal of the person on the tram who put his hand in your pocket is there to steal your wallet. And for this understanding, we do not at all need to know who he is. On the contrary, by his goals, we can understand that he is a pickpocket. Declared versus achieved. Many will dismiss attempts to understand under the pretext that everything is already clear. Operators ruin a person's life, torture, mock, and even say directly in their head, we will kill you, destroy you, harass you, and the like. What is there to guess? An operation to exterminate people. The temptation is great to stop there, but if you think about it, something is wrong here. Let's remember that the main occupation of operators is fooling around in the most vulgar way. What is one performance with the special services worth? All information received from them, which we cannot reliably verify, turns out to be a lie, no matter how plausible it may sound. This is such a precise rule that it can be taken as an axiom. So why then should their statements of purpose be truthful? This means that we can safely discard the content of the operator's statements. They are not true, but we can get some of this information, namely that they are trying to scare you and cause a defensive reaction. That's already something. Despite their deceit, operators unwittingly tell you the truth about their intentions. This is how we will achieve understanding, looking not at the stated goals, but at the achieved ones. But before moving on to the goals being achieved, let's remember what we know for sure about operators without speculation and assumptions. Operators have psychological training and constantly use it to manipulate, provoke, capture attention, establish rapport, and control the mental state of the subject. The statements of the operators are demonstrably false, and they diligently bring this to the attention of the subject. Everything that the operator states as demands, they actually do not need at all, and attempts to satisfy these demands will only lead to the frustration of the victim. The operators do not need the cooperation of the victim. It is deliberately rejected and sabotaged. Operators do not need the victim's trust. On the contrary, they deliberately undermine it. Operators do not need any resources that the victim has, but they can deprive him of them in order to cause suffering. Operators monitor the victim 24-7, tracking changes to repeated provocations. Operators do not need the death of the victim. On the contrary, they make efforts to prevent it. So what do they really need? It's time to look at the goals being achieved. 1. Convincing the victim that she is not crazy and that what is happening is real through a performance with neighbors and special services. 2. Experiencing acute emotions, panic, depression, despair and ultimately catharsis by the victim with a reassessment of their entire life. Alienation of the victim from his usual social circle. Development of critical thinking, distrust, secrecy, restraint, and attentiveness in the victim with the help of constant provocations, lies, and trolling. Changing the victim's usual lifestyle, habits, thinking, and reactions. Accustoming to constant stress, decreased sensitivity, coarsening, review of traumatic events from the past, and a change in attitude towards them. Personality breakdown through psychological trauma with long-term post-traumatic syndrome. Change in the financial situation of the victim. Financial losses. This is precisely the consequences of the operator's work. The process has remained virtually unchanged since at least 1880, which means that in the opinion of operators, it works successfully, and the result of the work must necessarily express the goal. Judging by the results mentioned above, Operators influence the victim in order to break and change their psyche. They are interested in the long-term effect. This once again confirms that operators do not need the death of the victim. Regarding the eighth point, it is obvious that material loss is not exactly a goal, but rather a tool used to manipulate the psychological state of the victim. Operators do not need the resources of the victim. With their capabilities, this is a drop in the bucket. They want the victim to be panicked and depressed during the hot phase. Upon its completion, material pressure subsides. So what happens? Do you still think operators are some kind of sadistic psychopaths with incredible technology who have fun with people? The goals of psi operators. Goal 1. Demonstrated. Torture and torment of the victim. Goal 2. Hidden. Modification of the psyche and personality of the victim. Goal 3. True. Matching the victim to some psychological pattern. Obviously, the first goal is fake, 
why is it even needed? I believe there are several reasons for this. Firstly, violent, invasive transformation of personality is in any case an unfriendly act. No matter how hard you try, the relationship will still come down to a conflict simply because of the very presence of someone unknown in your life. And even with demands for radical change, the victim's desire to fulfill such demands will be, to put it mildly, weak, but rather the opposite. They will resist and begin to resist. But if the subject considers the operators to be his enemies, then he is extremely motivated to act out of spite, which makes it easy to manipulate the subject using reverse psychology. Remember the famous, don't throw me into the phone bush? This is why harm, pain, material damage, and other pretense are caused by the special services. Operators simply need to force the subject to consider them enemies, an irresistible, sinister force, in order to inflict trauma on them, to bring them catharsis. Secondly, if the operators help the subject, then they will get hooked on the needle of handouts and will coordinate their actions with them, while the operators try to instill strength of character and independence in their wards. Thirdly, the victory over the forces of evil, although imaginary, will allow the subject to gain positive reinforcement and a modicum of self-confidence without expecting any compensation for his suffering. The reward will be victory itself. It is surprising that no one else has yet determined the true purpose of the operators. This is probably not least due to the urgent need to reform methods that have remained unchanged since pre-revolutionary years. This whole force with the special services is doing a lot of harm compared to the old days when possessed by demons ran to church without any options, lit a candle and received the order from the priest to pray, fast and change, which is what the operators are basically trying to achieve. The road to this understanding has become overly complicated in the information age. Operators and Reincarnation This is not an ordinary title for the theme of Psy Terror. We tend to talk about the things that we experience directly, bullying, harassment, but I hope that this article, based on my personal experience, will allow you to understand how pervasive this phenomenon is. Few people believe in reincarnation, and many only know it by hearsay. Personally, I have always been an atheist, and even our native orthodoxy was not close to me, not to mention Hinduism and all kinds of esotericism. However, during psychoterrorism, many things happen that completely change a person's views and beliefs. Attentive readers, like victims, know that operators very easily manipulate our memory, namely, open or close certain moments. For example, at the end of the first cycle of Psy Terror, I had a long heart-to-heart -heart conversation with the operators, after which all memory of this conversation was closed. These memories only returned at the very end of the second cycle, and along with them, many of our memories, which I will talk about in a separate article. It's worth mentioning that the operators got in touch many times long before the Psy Terror began, and these sessions were not tragic, but rather advisory. Memories even came back to me from the period when I still could not speak, but the operators were already talking to me. However, the memory I would like to discuss today is even earlier. It happened before I was born. Here the reader will have the right to twist his head and say, what kind of nonsense? Of course, it sounds absurd. Something like stories about side terrorism and gang stalking for an outsider. Therefore, I ask you to take my story seriously. There is not a drop of fiction in it. My earliest memory was of being in complete darkness, accompanied by invisible interlocutors. I did not have a body. I did not have a name. I was not aware of myself. But that was not a problem, because I was not concentrating on it. I felt no fear, but a great sense of curiosity. The interlocutors explained to me that I had to choose my future life, and they would show me the options. It was as if a screen appeared in front of me, on which short videos with my future parents flashed. They smiled holding a baby in their arms, which I instinctively knew was me. What was shown covered only the infancy period. I really liked what I saw, and I said that this option suits me, and I'm ready. The voices noted, somewhat worriedly, that there were other options and I should look into them. They said that I would regret my choice, but I was adamant in my decision. I liked everything, and I was burning with impatience to start this life. The voices sighed, and that was the end of the memory. I remembered not only the memory itself, but also that I had remembered it before, back in my distant childhood, and thought about what it meant. Then the memory and all references to it were forgotten. When this memory returned, it was as if I was scolded by one simple realization. The voices that accompanied me in my choice 
were the same operators who had occasionally communicated with me all my life and had carried out psi terror in recent years. I rushed to the internet in search of similar stories, and of course I found them. There are thousands of people who have had similar experiences and have memories of them. The details vary, but the general pattern is the same. A certain presentation with options and a person's choice of his future parents and future life. Not every one of them exhibits psi terrorism, which is why the intersection of the sets is small, and it is quite difficult to compare the fact that the operators are also in charge of reincarnation. However, if we remember the capabilities of the operators, compare them with religious references, the same caretakers in the Book of Enoch, and those goals that we were able to deduce based only on their actions, without any mysticism. There are too many coincidences, and things begin to fall into place. But let's refrain from drawing big hasty conclusions. Let's first look at the components of our puzzle. Reincarnation as a phenomenon. During this experience, neither I nor others who spoke about their experiences generally had memories of previous lives, but they were not empty blanks either. If we talk about me, I had an idea about all the concepts mentioned in the presentation showed to me. I had no questions about what family, parents, life, a child, a choice, or an option are. All this was known to me and did not require explanation. Even though I needed to choose, it was still explained to me. That is, it was something I did not know about. This means that I already had some knowledge before I was born. In addition, I already had my character exactly the one with which I had lived all my life. Curious, impatient, naive. It is believed that a person's character develops throughout his life from experience and communication with other people. Well, this is obviously not entirely true. We come into this world already charged with our character. This explains a lot, including the fact that the twins get completely different personalities. That is, we come from somewhere already formed. Where does this formation take place? In previous lives or somewhere else? Perhaps outside of our civilization. We cannot say for sure yet, but since we have already gained experiences before birth, we can safely talk about reincarnation, that is, rebirth after the end of a previous life, and not starting from scratch and going into oblivion. However, reincarnation gives a clear answer. The body is only our vessel, a bone meat mechanism in which the soul is placed. This is a standardized process and is carried out by the same operators who accompany a person throughout his life, taking his soul after death, erasing memory, but preserving changes in personality and soul. This is clearly consistent with the goals of psi terrorism that we identified earlier. The soul obviously does not require a body to exist. I definitely did not have a body during the selection procedure. Together, with a potentially infinite number of reincarnations, we can say that our soul is not a hypothetical concept, but a very concrete being, potentially immortal. A person's religion during their lifetime seems to make absolutely no difference and certainly does not affect where they are born. I was born in Soviet Russia, where they knew about Hinduism only from the film Zita and Gita, where they danced beautifully. That's where the concept ended. I also did not have any ideas about religion at the time of rebirth. However, this is a big question that deserves a separate article. There is one more aspect that everyone who is having children should think about. Your child, most likely, will not be yours. His body will probably be inhabited by an unknown person with a bunch of psychological problems to which you will add your own. 